All right, everyone, calm down. This isn't the second coming. The Batman has finally arrived on a tidal wave of hype some claim can overtake the Dark Knight. Now it is time to find out if everyone's fears were true, or if the film will stand with Joker as one of the best films DC has made. The Batman begins with him as an already established character and feared throughout the streets of Gotham. One night, the mayor of Gotham is murdered by the Riddler, who strings Batman along in his plan for Gotham. Along the way, he's helped by tokenized Gordon and Selina as they uncover the corruption of those in power in Gotham and how deep those ties go and to whom. Batman is kind of hard to write for because he is one of the greatest minds in the DC universe. Batman's villains are often manifestations or tests of who he is as an individual. Bane is strength and agility, Scarecrow is for his psyche, and Joker being the ultimate test of his will and morals. But come on, he's Bruce Wayne. He's a lawful good D&D character that rolled net 20s in each stat with a plus 10 modifier in his passive ability called Fuck You, That's How. He runs a multi-billion dollar international corporation by day and folds human origami by night. So how does the movie balance this? Well, they nuke the stats. Physically, Batman's costume makes him quite imposing. Standing at six foot one, Pattinson looms over everyone when you add the suit. <laughs> However, when you take him out of the suit, you see just how stuffed it is. It doesn't matter what it is, the armor on the shoulders and chest, the pads and the biceps, or the sock in the pants, when Pattinson is out of the suit, he is comically small. I mean, Jessica Biel in Blade Trinity would beat his ass kind of small. It doesn't help that while he is feared on the streets, the, and the music certainly does help sell the goddamn Batman, I can't help but chuckle since he walks around like he has a bottle of conditioner up his ass and he's trying not to sneeze. So while Pattinson is a very good Batman, he also lacks the charisma to be a good Bruce Wayne. Now, all of this leads into Batman's main feature, that being his detective work, which this film shows that he's less effective than the Scooby Gang. There certainly are moments where Batman puts things together in his head, of course, but the most critical information is given to him instead of him learning of it on his own. For example, it is Selina who gets information from the club or the corrupt cop not Batman. Alfred is the one who solves the cipher, allowing Batman to even begin following the Riddler's clues. Not Batman. Batman is also corrected on information at times, which isn't implausible, of course. It certainly happens in the comics from time to time, but I am not convinced that he's the world's greatest detective here. So to add to the previous example, Riddler is a test of intelligence, and Batman kind of fails here. Moving on, Gotham is literally dark. It's not AVP Requiem dark, but everyone here seems to have this aversion to light like they're trying to save on their electric bills, same as the dad when you touch the thermostat. And my god, the rain! I have expected Steve Carell to go crazy and build a boat on Main Street. I'm sold on the setting already. Gotham is chaotic, with hoodlums running the streets, the police aren't trusted, politicians are hated, and there's more rain than Godzilla 98. Gotham looks like an average day in Portland, so you don't have to try and go so far to sell me on how real the setting is. My good lord, even modern fucking politics weasels its tendrils into this film. Now this is where the writing kind of falters. As mentioned before, Batman, at least in this portion of the world, is already established. He and Gordon work together while the rest of the police are uneasy about Batman's presence, so the reasons are set and clear, while the Riddler and Selina are kind of lacking. There are also some reasons for Batman being as socially stunted as he is, and a good heart-to-heart -heart scene later in the film helps to quantify some of Bruce's choices and reasons. Although it doesn't completely get a pass because of his constant absence from his day job and other things in his social life. Now, while Riddler's costume is kind of trash, I kind of understand where he's coming from as a character. I do get what he's ultimately trying to do, but his reasoning is vague and honestly, pretty petty. I also don't get how he acquired all the information he has. That exposition scene also skips over details like when any of us agree to us terms of service. Selina, on the other hand, has almost no reason to exist in this film at all. You could remove her entirely, cutting down the runtime by 20 or 30 minutes and focusing more on Batman's investigations so as to be more tonally consistent, and it wouldn't hurt a thing. Her reasoning is so back and forth. She's trying to make money so she can leave Gotham, and she's trying to help a friend. And, and, is loyal to certain people in the underground, keeping her from leaving right away for no good reason. And, 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 develops feelings for Batman, which is such bullshit. They have less chemistry than Edward and Bella, and it comes out of nowhere, like a deer on the road. Then we have the action, which gets messier over time. Many of the fights are small and gritty, which I appreciate a lot. Batman doesn't leap between people like he's rubber banding in the Arkham games. No, if he gets hit, he gets hit.
awesome. He isn't the perfect fighter like the comics, or at least there isn't any evidence of that history in the film so far, which is fine. However, I mentioned there was armor on the suit, which brings up guns. For some reason, firearms are cop shop inconsistent here, which I understand is par for the course. But here is an example. At one point, not 10 or 15 feet away, someone blasts Batman in the back with a slug and he barely flinches. Later in the film, he's shot point-blank in the chest with buckshot and he's sent hurtling backwards that same distance. There also exist scenes where Batman and others are CGI, if not the entire shot. The best example is in both the movie and trailer, when Batman lands on the fly loft surrounded by smoke and manhandles some guys. Also, if you're excited for the Batmobile chase, it's not all that special. There was a tidal wave of hype behind this film, but I am an immovable object in this setting. The Batman is a decent film. It just barely misses the positive rating for me, since I have such high standards, but it is absolutely worth a watch. The film certainly does not constitute a bad rating at all, but it isn't a challenge for the crown held by the Dark Knight. And while it has been a hot minute since I last watched it, I think it would be best to compare it to Batman Begins. It's an enjoyable, albeit flawed watch that I wouldn't mind seeing again. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, Ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of the limp dick attempt that was Uncharted at the link over there. And I'll see you in the next video.